Well, everybody, welcome back to the Bible Breakdown Podcast with your host, Pastor Brandon. Today, 2 Chronicles chapter 23, and today's title is Spiritual Spring Cleaning. Spiritual Spring Cleaning. I don't know about you, but every time spring gets around, you know, I, I have things I've put off for a while, things have kind of gotten junked up in my garage or all that, and there comes a time when it's beautiful outside, there's no reason not to, and we just roll up our sleeves, put on our gloves, and just clean up. It's like get ready for a new season. Just like we do that physically, there comes time in our life when we need to do that spiritually. We're going to see that happen today in an extremely real way. We're going to do that in just a moment. But as always, if you like what we're doing here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to the YouTube channel and the podcast. Make sure that you are leaving us a five-star review on the podcast. You're commenting on the videos on YouTube. And make sure you're going to the Bible Breakdown discussion on Facebook. Because, man, I'm going to tell you something. The more we dig than what we find. And we want to hear how you are grappling with some of these things, how you're pursuing some of these things, and some of the ideas that you have on how you can apply God's Word to your life. You never know, your idea of how you're applying God's Word may be the catalyst that helps somebody figure out what God is doing in their life. And so, if you have your Bibles, want to open up with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 23. I want to kind of remind you what's going on the past couple of days. Now, two chapters ago, there was a guy named Ahaziah who would become king, and he was evil on the side of the Lord, and so he died. And there was a grandmother called Ataliah who she, she kind of took everybody who was in line for the kingdom ahead of her, and she killed them. <laughs> she killed all of them until she now is reigning. Well, one of Ahaziah's um, kids who he didn't get a chance, she didn't get a chance to kill was a guy named Joash, and they hid him out for six years in the temple because apparently that's the one place she wasn't going to go, I guess. <laughs> they not have to worry about her going to worship in the temple. Keep him in the temple. Well, he's seven years or six years old at the time where now they're about to clean house because she's an evil queen. She, what she did was horrible, and it's time for some spiritual spring cleaning. And so we're going to read this, and then we're going to finish up talking about what some next steps could be in our life. So if you're ready, Second Chronicles 23, verse 1, says this. In the seventh year of Ataliah's reign, Jehoiada, Jehoiada, the priest, decided to act. He summoned his courage and made a pact with the five army commanders, Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, uh, Ishmael, or messed up that one, Ishmael, son of Jehoanan, Azariah, son of Obed, Mahaziah, son of Adiah, and Ishlaphet, son of Zikri. These men traveled secretly throughout Judah and summoned the Levites and the clan leaders and all the towns to come to Jerusalem. They all gathered at the temple of God where they made a solemn pact with Joash and the young king. Jehoiada uh, said to them, Here is the king's son. The time has come for him to reign. The Lord has promised that a descendant of David will be our king. And this is what you must do. When you priests and Levites come on duty on the Sabbath, a third of you will serve as gatekeepers. Another third will go over to the royal palace and the final third will be at the foundation gate. Everyone else should stay here in the courtyard of the Lord's temple. Remember, only the priests and Levites on duty may enter the temple of the Lord, for they are set apart as holy. The rest of the people must obey the Lord's instructions and stay outside. You Levites, form a bodyguard around the king and keep your weapons in hand. Kill anyone who tries to enter the temple. Stay with the king wherever he goes. So, it's time. It is about to get real. All right, verse 8. So the Levites and all the people of Judah did everything as Jehoiadiah, the priest, ordered. The commanders took charge of the men reporting for duty that Sabbath, as well as those who were going off duty. Jehoiada, the priest, did not let anyone go home after their shift ended. <laughs> Can you imagine that one guy? Dude, I have been on this job for 12 hours. We're about to overthrow the queen. I mean... Could you do it after the weekend? <laughs> no, we're doing it right now. All right, verse 9. Then Jehoiada supplied the commanders with spears and large and small shields that had belonged to King David and were stored in the temple of God. Those are some awesome shields. They're probably 100 years old at this point. They're like, they're fine. All right, verse 10. He stationed all the people around the king with their weapons ready. They formed a line from the south side of the temple, from the temple around the north side and all around the altar. Then Jehoiada... And his sons brought out Joash, the king's son, and placed a crown on his head and presented him a copy of God's law. They anointed him and proclaimed him king, and everyone shouted, Long live the king. Wow, what a moment. So think about it. They have these guards around him. They have the shields of David. 
And I'm sure they would have probably the crest on there. Everybody knew who those shields were. And then the, the son, grand, 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 great, 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 grandson of David, comes walking out, little seven-year-old boy. They put a, a man's crown on his head, give him a scroll, which every king had to have, which is the law of God, and declare him king. Ooh, that's awesome and terrifying if you're a seven-year-old boy, but amazing that now they have a new king. Verse 12, when Ataliah heard the noise of the people running and the shouts of praise to the king, she hurried to the Lord's temple to see what was happening. When she arrived, she saw the newly crowned king standing in his place of authority by the temple at the, at the pillar of the temple's entrance. The commanders and the trumpeters were sound, surrounding him, and all the people of the land were rejoicing and blowing trumpets. Singers and musicians were leading the people in great celebration. When Ataliah saw this, she tore her clothes in despair and shouted, Treason! Treason! Then Jehoadiah, the priest, ordered the commanders who were in charge of the troops, Take her to the soldiers at the front of the temple and kill anyone who tries to rescue her. For the priest had said, She must not be killed in the temple of the Lord. So they seized her and led her to the entrance of the horse gate on the palace grounds, and they killed her there. Then Jehoadiah made a covenant between himself and the king and the people that they would be the Lord's people. And all the people went over to the temple of Baal and tore it down. They demolished the altars and smashed the idols, and they killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Jehoadiah now put the priests and Levites in charge of the temple of the Lord, following all the directions given by David. He also commanded them to present burnt offerings to the Lord as prescribed by the law of Moses and to sing and rejoice as David had instructed. He also stationed gatekeepers at the gates of the Lord's temple to keep out those for any reason who were ceremonially unclean. Then the commanders, nobles, rulers, and all the people of the land escorted the king from the temple of the Lord. And they went through the upper gate into the palace and they seated the king on the royal throne. So all the people of the land rejoiced, and the city was peaceful because Ataliah had been killed. Wow. That's amazing. I mean, they, just, they just straight up said, mm -mm, you're done. And they went and they spiritually just did a spring cleaning. They destroyed the Baal uh, priest and all that stuff. They reinstituted worship at the temple like it was supposed to be, all the way back to the instructions of David. And they said, there's a new sheriff in town. He's a seven-year-old boy named Joash, and until he is ready, we're going to operate this thing, and we're going to serve the Lord. Wow. That's amazing. And you know what I think about when I think about that? Is I think about times in my life when I let certain things creep in. It doesn't always have to be sin. Just lax. A busy season where I have a certain time where I have my prayer time and I have my Bible time. And because I get busy in a season, I slowly start to take a shortcut here, take a shortcut there. I don't read my Bible as faithfully as I should. I don't pray as I faithfully should. I just start taking, start taking shortcuts because of one reason or another. And it doesn't have to be bad. Many times the devil doesn't have to make you bad. He just needs to make you busy. And as you get busy, you start to Start to slowly let other things get in and other things start to happen. You start to, to get a little bit, little bit of this, this bad habit starts to creep in a little bit. And this starts to happen over here. And sometimes you can go through difficult seasons. And in order to medicate that broken place in your life, you let this in. You let that in. You just, just anything. It can be so many different things that are not maybe even bad in themselves. But when they get imbalanced in our life or they start to draw us away from God or we start to turn toward that thing rather than turning toward God, that's when it becomes unhealthy. And what we have to remember is that there needs to be a time in our life when we say, I'm going to do a spiritual spring cleaning. Can I tell you when I do this in my life? I do this in my life every January and every summer. The reason why I do it every January is because usually coming out of Christmas time, you know, I have an opportunity to really kind of take a little bit of time off, not always a lot, but a little bit of time off. And I'm able to kind of sit and really think about, okay, have I drifted in any way in my life? Is there any course corrections I need to make? And then I make some course corrections and I start in January making course corrections. And then I do the same thing in the middle of summer as I'll take a, a day or two. And I kind of get away. You know, sometimes it's like, you know, a Saturday morning, you know, I'll, I'll get up a little extra early and I'll just be like, all right. It's time for me to do some spiritual spring cleaning. Where is my life right now? What's my devotional life look like? What's my relationship with my friends look like? What's my relationship with my spouse look like? What's my relationship with my kids? Just, just kind of take an inventory and go, okay, is there anything that's creeped in? Have I allowed busyness to crowd out the Lord? 
And then instead of dealing with the shame and all that kind of stuff, the Bible doesn't say anything about how they just really got mad at the, at the people and be like, hey, you, you're terrible. No, no, instead, hey, you know what? There's time for that right now. Let's course correct. Let's get God back at the center of our lives. And I want to ask you this question. When is the last time you did a spiritual spring cleaning? When is the last time you looked at your life and you said, okay, what's my devotional life look like? What's my giving life look like? Do I give faithfully to the Lord? The Lord has blessed me so very much. I don't have everything I want. I got everything I need. Am I giving to the Lord or have I slowly edged God out in that? What about with my relationships? Do I have God honoring relationships in my life? What about what I consume? What kind of media do I consume? Do I consume things that bring me down and, and, and bring fear and worry into my life? Just, just take evaluations and everything's going good. Hey, man, A+, plus, I'm good. Or do you need to do some course corrections? I'll tell you one of the things that happens in my life is I find when I get busy, my relationships with my friends start to take a back seat. And these are spiritual friends who help me be accountable. And I will just go through time where I'm not, I say, hey guys, you know what? I've gotten, I've gotten distant again. I'm sorry. I don't need to come back again. And they've been, we've been friends for years. So they go, that's fine, man. We knew you'd be coming back. And then there's times when they'll do the same thing. And it's just being accountable because I want to make sure that I don't drift too far away. So here's your homework. Take some time over the next couple of days and write out a list, your devotional life, your personal life, your, if you're married, your marriage, if you have kids, your kids, your friends, your work life balance, that kind of stuff. Just, just make a list and then just make an inventory. How am I, or do an inventory. How am I doing? Grade yourself. And if it's anything lower than an A, then not, how am I going to change everything, but how am I going to change one thing to bring one of those from a C to a C plus to a B and slowly make some course corrections. Because it's not about how many times you fall. It's about how many times you get back up again. And God is more interested in your progress than in your perfection because he's, he's going to continue to work on you. But he wants you to progress and get closer to him every day. Okay? Let's pray. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you, God, that you never give up on us. And Lord, there are seasons like what we saw today where it's time to make course correction. And Lord, for all of us, we need to be doing this. But sometimes it can be hard because it's, it's hard questions and it's, it's hard reality sometimes we have to face. I pray you will help us to have the courage to step into those moments and to realize, God, that you're not there to beat us up. You're there to help us to find holiness in our life because when we get rid of those other things, we can get closer to you. And your word says that it's in your presence that we find fullness of joy, everything that we're looking for. We celebrate that today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And what God's word says in 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9, the eyes of the Lord search the whole earth in order to strengthen those whose hearts are fully committed to him. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for 2 Chronicles chapter 24.